Now, for all of the recipes that we do cook up here on Afternoon Express, there's one thing that is key, and that is exactly what we're about to get into. While it may sound obvious, the key to successful cooking and baking is to always measure the ingredients carefully. Now, Jay is here to share some of his useful measuring tips to get you on your way. Uh, Chef Jay, <laughs> small. Go There's a it, lot boy. going on. Uh, I mean, a, lot, a lot going on, but mm. everything should be familiar to everyone at home, right? Uh, measuring ingredients can be quite tricky, right? Um, Ooh, especially okay. with things like your dry ingredients, which is where we're going to start today, right? Mm. So what I would do is take an additional spoon and have a bowl to catch all the excess. We don't want to waste anything in the kitchen, right? All so right. we're going to spoon in to the top of our um, little measuring cup, right? And then we're going to take the flat end of a knife and then push it over. Got you. So oh. for me, this is, this is the way that I measure the, my flour. And I've done it a number of times. We have actually done this and weighed it. Yeah, and this, sure. is, this way get, leaves you with the least amount of room for error. So okay. this is a good trick to do. Don't, instead of scooping and scraping, mm. spoon and Take level. Also. And then what mm. I'm going to do is ask you to just help yes, me sift this flour, right? So another trick, Pali, some recipes might call for sifted flour, yes. right? So what I love to do, and I'm going to move this out of the way so the viewers can see. Guide me, hey? I like to have a piece of uh, baking paper underneath, so mm -hmm. you can just put that in and then just give it a shape. All right, thank you. There we go. Just you like this. You can go a bit quicker. Oh, Starting quicker. the serving process. Yeah. Starting that serving process. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to stop there, just so the viewers can get an idea. So what oh. I, what's nice about this, Pali, is that once you've sifted your flour, you can then put it oh. into your measuring cup to measure. Yet another time. Right. Mm. So if you were to perhaps sift it into a bowl and then try and you know, it's quite awkward to then get it into a measuring mm. cup to measure. So that's an, a, a really nice trick to use at home. So Make sure you're using paper. all of the things in your kitchen. So exactly. that baking paper, love that. Brilliant. So let's move Good on methods. to something like butter. Do you like butter? Oh, I love butter. Love butter. Uh -huh. Now, butter is a bit tricky because, you know, it's often you pull it out of your fridge, it's ice cold. You yeah. try to cut blocks and force it into your, your it measuring spices. cup. You know, it's quite, mm. quite challenging. What I like to do is softened butter. So before I melt my butter, I, I, I soften it at room temperature. And again, oh, okay. we're going to use the scoop. And the flatter. And the level. And then you just remove the excess. And then from here, you can then decant it, melt, uh, it, melt it. You can put it in the fridge to harden, depending on your, what your you want, on, exactly. on what you want. Mm. Some people would melt the butter, me um, measure it, and then, and then cool it. But sometimes if you melt your butter and add it to your recipe, it might end up thinning out your batter and so forth. So rather use oh. softened butter. Remember we were all at, at school at some point, yep, right? Yep, and yep. there was one thing that you learned and you just thought you were never going to use it again. Uh -huh. that, most of high school was like that for me. Water. Okay, so a lot of people will sort of, you know, oh, have okay. it, you know, down there and then measure. But oh. what is important with water is to actually go to, to, to eye level, right? Oh, I see. So what you will do, what you will see is once you pour your water, so waters are quite an interesting thing. The molecules in the water react to the container. So as you pour your water, it creates what they call a meniscus. So oh, it actually, con okay. it actually concaves. Well so it actually concaves in your jug. So what you want to do is you go, you know, eye level, and you want the bottom of the concave to touch the level that you're looking for. <laughs> Got oh, that. Right. Oh, so, I saw it just <laughs> hope for the best. Pour it in there, hope for the best. It's all going to be good. Uncle. It's all going to be good. It's all going to be And you good. see, you, I've, I've poured my water into a jug first. Yes. Some people will, you know. From the tap. From, from the, the tap, tap straight away. And it, it's, uh. you know, baking and cooking is all about having control in the kitchen. And these are a few ways that you can, you know, have a bit more control when sure. baking and cooking. You've done Ooh. it again, Chef Jay. You You've happen in a must say. <laughs> you know your thing. Well, well I had you next to me, so I felt, you know. Of course, the backup. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so cool. But he definitely does know his things. But another gentleman who also knows a thing or two in the kitchen, I'm joking, <laughs> is Chef Chart. He knows a whole lot more. So he's also about to guide us through making a traditional milk tart. Ooh. Ah, 